Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and this is a Godot follow-up video to the tutorial that I did last week. And so this isn't a dis the disclaimer, this isn't a tutorial. This is just kind of some interesting things that I found and some interesting conclusions and tests that I did based on some of the feedback and comments that you guys made. So the very first thing that I want to talk about is actually this right here when we run the game. Uh, some of you commented that if you run into the wall, your character switches between the jumping and running animation really quickly. And sometimes if you press the jump button during this, you actually won't jump. And the reason is because your character, uh, the, the is on floor function is actually returning false for some of that time when we're running into the wall. So there are a few solutions that I came up with that fix this problem. Number one, you can actually use test move to check to see if you're on the floor. I don't, so you could do something like this. You could say if test move, and then it takes a transform, which you can just use your own transform, and then it needs to know where you want to move to. You could say vector two dot down like this, right? And run the game like this. You could use test move. That will return true if there's something below you, and you can see that solves the problem. However, I don't know that I like this solution because I I don't know a lot about test move, but my instincts tell me it's probably not good to call that function every single frame, every single physics frame, uh, since we're in the physics process here, every, every single physics process. I don't really think that's a good solution. So um, the other solution is actually to open up our player here and we could use some raycast. So raycast right here, and you could have this raycast go cast down by one, and then you could just, um, well, probably what you'd wanna do is move it up here and then cast down by two, like that, just to make sure. Um, and you could use these to determine if you're, you'd probably wanna do two, stick another one over here. You could use these ray casts to determine if your character is colliding with the ground. And this is actually probably a really quick solution. Um, my guess is that ray casting is really optimized and this is a good solution to that problem. Uh, the other solution, and this is actually the solution that in my course ended up being part of it was using move and slide with snap. And so what you can do is you can use move and slide with snap, which creates a snap vector and that helps for moving on platforms or moving down slopes. and then you can make sure to set that snap vector to zero when you need to jump, but then set it back down when you're not jumping. Now there are some other issues that come along with that that I don't really like, and I just think that the move and slide with snap function is still kind of new and has some things that they're trying to sort out. It does a lot for you, and so it's kind of, you know, it kind of tries to do a ton of stuff all on its own, and that comes with some of its own issues. Uh, so those are some solutions. However, another thing you guys mentioned is that we're, we're um, inside of our friction here, our linear interpolation, we're not multiply, multiplying by delta. And you would be correct, and that's something that uh, we need to be fixing or else our, our friction will be tied to our frame rate. So in Godot, well, let's talk about a few interesting things. Number one, uh, one of you said that you can multiply the delta time by the frame rate of the game so that you don't have to have giant um, numbers like this, right? Our max speed is 64 and our, our acceleration is 512. That really doesn't make a lot of sense. So I looked into our project settings and if we come into physics, uh, right here, common under physics, you can see our physics FPS is set to 60. So that's the target FPS that we're going to be trying to get. So up here in the top, we can just make a const target FPS 
is 60. Now you can actually get the frame rate um, with this function. Well, let me actually show you that first. So we'll do this. We'll come into our physics here. We'll say var target FPS equals engine dot get frames per second. So you can get the frames per second, right? And then and then let's update our numbers here. So let's make our acceleration eight. That way it takes us, you know, eight frames to get to our max speed. Uh, we'll make our friction eight right here. I'll explain this in a minute. We'll make our air resistance one. We'll make our gravity four. And we'll want to increase our jump height just a little bit, so we'll make this 140. So these are some values that I already tested. Uh, so now what we do is whenever we're applying delta, we want to also multiply that by our target FPS, right? So target FPS right there on our gravity, also multiply by target FPS right there. And um, in our lerp here, we're going to do friction times delta. We don't multiply that one by the target FPS. And that's just because our friction amount is already going to be high enough at, at eight that we don't need to multiply it by our target FPS. And then our air resistance also multiplied by delta. So um, using delta in this form inside of a lerp function actually isn't a perfect solution. Uh, this does work, but it can cause some issues. And so there's actually some better functions for it. And I was trying to figure out how to use it. And to be honest, I was having a little bit of a hard time understanding exactly how it works. So I need to look into that again. Uh, but this is an okay solution. This is better than not multiplying by delta at all. That's my understanding. And so maybe I'll make another follow-up video that will talk about the the actual implementation of this right here. So, and you notice right there at the very start, so this all looks good, right? We can move. And one of the other consequences that I found of this is that it actually fixes the is on floor problem, which was surprising to me that it solved that problem. So the is on floor function is a little bit tricky. I don't know exactly how it works. It's not quite as straightforward. If you're worried about it, it might be better to use Raycas. Um, but yeah, once we multiply by delta, we get we get this working, and maybe our friction could be a little bit more than that. I don't know, ten. See how that goes. Um, so if we print our target frames per second here. We print our target frames per second here. Uh, you'll see that when the game starts, for whatever reason, it starts out at one frame per second, and then goes to two for a few for a few frames, and then 52, and then we go up to 60. And it looks like it's a bunch of frames, but it's probably like three seconds. But the weird thing is that our game actually isn't running at one frame per second in that scenario. It actually just seems like the function returns the wrong value. Um, and I don't know exactly why. I don't know exactly what that is. But you see that we eventually do get to our target 60 frames per second. So what I found is we just don't use the function. We make a const up here. We say target FPS. We set this equal to 60 because that's what it's going to be anyways right down here. And then we get rid of that, and the game runs fine. We don't have any slowdown. There might be a little bit of slowdown there at the start, but it's not near as noticeable um, because we're setting the target frame per second just to 60 right there. So, yeah, some interesting things that I just kind of discovered while I was messing around with the comments that you guys sent, and I wanted to talk about them and show them to you. The last thing that I want to show you, which I thought was pretty interesting, is like, let's say we do the ready function here, which is kind of like our our create event if you're coming from GameMaker. It just runs once this node is ready in the scene. There's actually, 
a thing called engine set um, time scale. And this kind of blew my mind. You can actually set the time scale of the engine equal to like 0 0.5. And then everything will run at half the speed. Which was really interesting to me that you could do that. And I don't think you would want to use that variable in your actual game. And uh, like if you were going to slow down time, you wouldn't want to use that variable to do it. You'd want to set up your own system for doing that. And if you notice... When the time scale is low, the is on floor doesn't doesn't seem to work how I expect it anymore. In the corners there, it struggles. So this might I don't know what this is for. Like uh, I found the function and I was like, well, that's interesting that you can just mess with the time scale. What is its intended use? Is it is it intended to like simulate a slower computer maybe? Uh, so that you can test stuff that way, you know, like, oh, if they're, if you're running on a computer that can only run one fourth of your frame rate, right? 15 frames per second. Um, but it doesn't look like it's running slower and you can see we're, we're struggling when we, when we do that with our ground check, uh, our is on floor. And so I don't know what this is actually for. So if you guys have any comments uh, if you know what that's supposed to be used for, I couldn't, I didn't actually see it in the documentation. All it does is say um, it controls how fast the in-game clock ticks versus a real life one. And so you can make the game move faster or slower. But I, like, I know what it does, but why would you ever use it? You know what I mean? Um, maybe it is designed to be used for like a bullet time feature uh, just built into the engine. But it seems like I don't know that I would actually want to do that if I would actually want to use it. So anyways, uh, this has been a little bit of a different video from what I normally do. And uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it and learned some things. And I think it might be fun to do more videos like this in the future. Oh, that that's one last thing I want to talk about, the flickering tile thing. Um, I guess it's an issue with some with some GPUs on NVIDIA GPUs on Windows. And I don't exactly know. I think they have like a, in the project settings, they have like a setting or a, a, a checkbox to try and help uh, solve that problem too. But my computer has it because I'm on like a GTX 750 Ti or something, some old GPU that's... Uh, you know, good enough for what I, what I need to do good enough for these little games. So, but yeah, uh, it's just kind of an interesting dive into some of the things that you guys talked about in the comments that I thought I'd address and talk about. And then, uh, I'm going to update the source code and upload this video. So let me know how you guys felt about this video. If you'd like to see me do more videos like this, where I kind of just explore some different problems and maybe some different solutions with them. And, and if that is interesting to you, let me know. Thanks for watching the video and I will talk to you all later.